to me let us go into the house of the Lord hallelujah because in the house is where we can draw strength from one another amen in the house is where we can cast our cares upon him 
in the houses where we can just be naked before the Lord. Hallelujah. He already knows about our issues. Hallelujah. He already knows our strengths and our weaknesses. And still, even through all of that about ourselves, hallelujah, God still loves us and he still reaches his hands out toward us. He still says, come unto me, my child, hallelujah. So come on, let's give God some praise in this place, hallelujah. Let's give God some praise in this place, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy, oh Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to ask all those who are, who are able to stand, to please stand, hallelujah, as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we appreciate you now, Lord God. We thank you for all thy goodness and all thy mercies, God. They are new to us each and every morning, and we thank you on today, Lord God. We thank you for another day in you, Jesus, another fresh start, Lord God, another new beginning, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for casting our sins, Lord God, into the sea of forgetfulness, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for when we messed up, Lord God, you did not hold it against us. So on today, Lord God, we give you praise. We stand before you on today, Lord God, with our hearts open, oh God, with our minds, Lord God, on you on today, Lord God, as we invite you in this place, Father God, we want you to have your way on today, Lord God. Break every chain, Lord God, that binds people, Lord God. Break up fallow ground, Lord God, that keeps them from growing, oh God. Father God, take away and break up those things, Lord God, that we have no need of, Lord God, that are not, Lord God, hallelujah, strengths to our spiritual growth on today, Lord God. We ask, Father God, that you have your way in this place, Lord God. Touch bodies, oh God. Touch minds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We just want to give you glory in this place, Lord God. We just want to give you honor in this place, oh God. We want our praise to be acceptable and pleasing unto you, Lord Lord God. So Father God, we bless your name on today, Jesus. Hallelujah. So have your way in this place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. You are now in the hands of voices of new day. God named Jesus. When we thought that we have done the most worst things possible, when we thought that we would not be forgiven, Jesus said, You're worthy today. Because by His stripes, we are healed.
thought we were worth keep keeping us Lord and he's cleared us up inside he thought we were to die for he thought we were he thought we were to die for bless the wonderful name of Jesus hallelujah who died for our sins hallelujah when we were undeserving hallelujah where we were unwilling to accept his love hallelujah he still died for us hallelujah that's why we lift his name on this morning hallelujah did anybody come to bless the name of Jesus hallelujah
heart says yes, yeah, yeah. my soul says yes, yeah, yeah. when I feel tired yeah, yeah. and feel like I can't go on, yeah, yeah. the Lord stepped in, yeah, yeah. right on time, yeah, 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 yeah. tell your mountain, yeah, yeah. my God will move you, yeah, yeah. tell your valley, yeah, yeah. some praise for our worship leaders when we chilling on a Saturday morning amen they're in here preparing to go and do battle before the Lord and we are so thankful grateful amen for the work that they have done amen come on and give God some praise we can't praise God enough amen and I will tell you that these worship leaders they are blessed they are anointed Amen. And if I don't say it enough, I am well pleased. I mean, I, I and I believe God is too. But I can speak for myself. I can't speak for the Lord. I'm, a, yeah, I can speak the word concerning it. But I don't. He hadn't told me if y'all he was well. Y'all were well pleased with him. So I don't want to speak out of turn yet. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God. Amen for the music ministry, the worship ministry here at New Day. Those that are serving today. Amen. Even those that are not here on this morning are not serving are not scheduled to serve on today i thank god for you i'm a music guy i can't sing i can't sing but i love i love you may take your seats i love i love the music ministry amen uh throughout the community amen i, I have a special place for worship leaders and musicians amen and they know who i am and i know who they are and i try to identify and recognize amen the worship ministry because they're they have a a job that everyone can't do and they're oftentimes aren't appreciated for amen but you get up here and try to sing a note and carry it for more than a couple of seconds you'll find out real quick that the worship leaders are important amen let pastor hayes get over on the drums just a second it won't take you long to recognize that Richard II is a unique and special and blessed and anointed individual over there on the drums. Amen. If you need me to pluck one string, I'm the man. But if you need me to pluck more than one, you better call Lockheed. You better call Lockheed. There's a slight tune I learned a long time ago. Amen. I don't even know what the keys are. I know where they're at. 
and I can hit those five keys and make a melody. But outside of that, you better call Marcus Barrett. You better call Deacon Barrett. <laughs> Amen. To get the job done. Amen. If he don't know it, he'll YouTube it. Amen. <laughs> we thank God for him. They have grown so much, and it's just, amen, a blessing for me to see, amen, what God has done in their lives. Amen. All of them, amen, God, they have, have done it. They've done what they've done because they had a zeal and a desire to serve in the area that they're serving. Amen. And anytime you have that zeal and a desire, God can anoint your hands. He can anoint your voice. He can anoint you in the place that you are to do some, do what you do in excellence. Do I have any believers on this morning? Amen. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you being with us on today. We're getting ready to go into the word. Amen. And I don't know how long I'm going to be before you today, but hey, we online. So, you know, we <laughs> time is, of the, is, is not an object that we have to deal with. We'll be all right. Amen. <laughs> Head deacon said, amen, so we ain't worried about it. We good to go. I got the green light. Amen. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Philippians. Book of Philippians, the second chapter. Book of Philippians, the second chapter. Amen. Marcus, I feel like that electric organ this morning. You got the church organ that, yeah, give me some. I feel like a little bit of that this, this morning. Amen. Go with me, Philippians, the second chapter. And the 14th verse, 2nd chapter 14th verse, I thank God for Lady Opal Sakia Hayes being with me this morning. Amen, amen. She is always right by my side. Amen. Does a, is a wonderful woman in her own right, but she supports me real well, supports me real well. And I know she is praying for me this morning. So I ain't got nothing to worry about. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Amen. <laughs> Philippians, the 2nd chapter, 14th verse. The Bible reads and it says this, do all things without grumbling or questioning. Let me, let me slow down real right, right, right fast here. Do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Being that we are lights in the world, it says, do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked, somebody say crooked, and twisted generation. There should be something about us when it comes to work that we do. First of all, somebody shall do. 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 If anybody's going to do it, ought to be us that we should be able to do something. Do. So it says do all things without grumbling or questioning. Father, we thank you this morning. Appreciate you, love you, adore you, God. And now ask that you would anoint this word in this hour for your people, wherever they may be, that you would bless us, increase us, that you would keep us, Lord God, that you would, Lord God, continue to enhance and deliver us into the things that you uh, desire for us to do about this kingdom and the business that we are in. And we thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. Do all things without grumbling or question that you may be blameless, innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Tell your neighbor, and my subject for this morning is, I got to do something. Come on, come on. We back in the house now. We got we got some folks in the house. I know I see you online, amen, but I need my people in the house to talk to me this morning. Tell somebody, I got to do something. One of the most powerful tools we have as humans is our ability to choose. Our ability to choose what we desire, what we want to do, what we feel like doing. God has given us dominion over absolutely everything and the choice to choose which direction or path that we will take. Whether it is in his will or not of his will, we have a choice to make saints of God 
<laughs> that is wholly set upon us that we choose the right way, that we choose to make a decision, to make a choice on how we're going to live our lives. Are we going to raise our families up in Christ? Are we going to party all night long? Are we going to lay up and do absolutely nothing? Or are we going to go and work and put our hands to the plow and make sure that kingdom business, amen, in even our physical body, personal business is taken care of. We have a choice. Uh, but I like that word do. Do mean that it's active, that you're doing something, that you're moving, that, that there is some motion taking place. So we have to do something, but we must make a choice. You can choose to do or be anything that you desire to do. Uh, you may not, it, it may not be good at all. You may not be good at it, but, but it's your choice whether you do it or not. You have a choice whether I want to be, I'm going, I'm going to be a doctor. I choose to be a doctor. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to take care of the business. I'm going to get the certifications. I'm going to spend the time. I'm going to invest in it. Whether you be a good doctor or not, that's, that, that, that's between you and God, but you you can choose to do it if you so desire. Uh, I chose to get up to come to church on a Sunday morning. I could have chose to stay in my bed. I could have chose, amen, to chill out and watch some Netflix. I could have chose, uh, amen, to, to, to just hang out and wash my car. But I chose this morning to be in the house of the Lord doing what I know that he has called and anointed me to do. I tell your neighbor, there is a choice. But I got to do something. I got to do something. But we have a choice what we are going in, in this life, amen. As we go from day to day, it's filled with decisions. And, 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 and it is hard to live a life where you don't make a choice at some point in time. Even if you choose that I'm doing absolutely nothing and but lay in my bed, I have made a choice for the day that I've chose not to do absolutely anything. I made a decision. And we have a choice, but I encourage you this morning, and this is the word from the Lord, that we've got to do something. We've got to do something. Second Kings, the seventh chapter. Amen. We talked that over at the conference on yesterday. It was a theme scripture. Amen. And, and, and I looked at it and I began to study it and I began to look back and, and, and kind of reflect on what we talked about. Amen. And we really didn't hit it deeply. So I'm going to hit it this morning. And we look at 2 Kings, the seventh chapter and the third verse. And it says, and there were four lepers, men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit here until we die? Eh. Yeah, that's a good question for us. We got four men sitting at the gate. They're in the midst of the famine. On the inside, the people are protected. On the outside, amen, is the, uh, are, are those that are desired, the, the Syrians that are desiring to go to war with them. Amen. And we've got a choice to make. Either we can just sit here or, or, or we can just die. Why sit here until we die. Verse 4 says, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we'll die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were there, they came to the othermost part of the camp of Syria. And behold, there was no man there. Watch this, saints of God. These four lepers, they had to consider their position. Uh-huh. So, so that we, in other words, saints, we've got to consider the state that we are in. What is your current situation? Yeah, yeah. What is your current situation? Uh, 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 Will Smith and, and and Jada told us that they was in an entanglement. That was a situation. Uh, uh, they, some of us will tell us in our social media posts that it, what we're in is complicated. Uh, and what is your current state? What is your situation? Where are you right now? These four lepers considered. They looked and said, "Look, it's famine inside the gate. It's death on the other side of the gate. Can we?" Just just sit here and do nothing and just die. 
Why would we do that? What are our options? What is, you've got to consider the position that you are in. What is your state of mind? What's your current situation? How long have you been there? How, 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 how productive have you been? Uh, uh, what's going on in your life? Uh, what is your mind state? What is your emotional state? Uh, what's going on with you financially? What's going on with you spiritually? Where are you right now? They considered where they were. Uh, uh, next thing they realized, they, they realized the outcome wasn't good. Amen. They, 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 they looked at where they were and they saw and they looked around and they said uh, the outcome is not good. So, so they had to be real with themselves. Uh -huh. You've got to be real with yourself, saints of God. You, you may fool some folk for a little while, but, but it, it, at the end of the day, you've got to be real with you. You know that things ain't going the way they should be going. You, you know you're sitting in the midst of sin. You, you know that the situation that's complicated ain't got to be, got to be as complicated as you think it is. Uh, you know that the entanglement that you're in ain't got to be tangled no more. You just got to cut some ties and lose some things. You got to real. They realized the outcome. They knew they were going to die, but they had to be real with themselves. Do we want to just die sitting right here? And we've got to question ourselves and be realistic with ourselves. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm doing absolutely nothing. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I, 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 I'm not expanding my territory. I'm sitting here and I'm working the same job. I'm, I'm sitting here and he's steadily abusing me. I'm sitting here and I'm steadily going broke. I'm sitting here and my pockets are getting drained. I'm sitting here and my financial state is diminishing. I'm sitting here here and I'm confused. I'm sitting here and I'm hungry. I'm sitting here and I'm unproductive but I've got to be real with me because to everybody else it looks good on the outside. I, I got a nice house. I got a nice car. I got nice shoes but tell your neighbor I got to do something trying to do something. These lepers saw themselves and then the next thing they said, I've got to make a choice. They made a choice to do something about the situation that they were in. They had said, did the Bible doesn't say how long they sat there, but, but they had sat there long enough to come to a realization and to be realistic with themselves and okay, we sitting here and the next step is we gonna die. So if we gonna die, how are we going to die? Are we gonna die doing absolutely nothing or are we going to try to do something concerning our situation huh. been ostracized they had been kicked outside kicked to the curb they couldn't they couldn't be around nobody but 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 they, they knew what the rules were they, they knew what the situation was. They were realistic with their situation. Uh, and they realized that their outcome wasn't going to be good. Once you realize that you're in a dead situation, it's up to you to live. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you to live. You got to have enough in you to say that I choose life over death. I choose to live over my current state. I choose to live for myself, not for my family, not for my husband, not for my job. But I've got something on the inside of me that's good enough for God, that is good enough for the world, and it's got to be good enough for me. I choose to live. They, they made a choice to do something and this becomes our problem saints of God many times we consider our position and, and we're realistic with ourselves but, but we, 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 we hesitate because now we have to make a choice to do something it's time to make a decision uh, what am I going to do about what's going on in my life will I continue doing nothing that, that, that can't be an option but because I know if I do nothing I'm going to die right here 
But saints of God, you've already prayed. You've already researched. You've already planned it 20 times. Now what are you going to do? You, When are you going to make a choice that I'm going to do something about my situation? I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of going through. I'm tired of trying to make ends meet. I'm trying of trying. When am I going to do something? I've got to do something about my situation. Tell somebody I got to do something. Make a choice to do something. A decision has to be made. You've already prayed about it. God already told you what to do. You looked at it from every angle. You've evaluated the situation from top to bottom. You've done the research. You know how much it costs for you to go into it. You know it's going to cost some family. You know it's going to cost some friends. You know it's going to cost some loved ones. You know it's going to cause you to cry a little bit you know it's gonna hurt your heart just a little bit you know you've been connected for a long time but you already prayed you've already done the research you've already considered the cost you know how to maneuver it you know how to maximize it you know how to make the best of it you've done it 20 times in your head but what are you going to do nudge your neighbor, tell him I got to make a choice to do something. I got to make a choice to do something. Amen. You've been you've been courting her all your life. God brought y'all together. You save, she save. Why y'all still playing dress up? What's going on? You'll never be a perfect husband. You'll never be a perfect groom. Never be a perfect bride. But you've done all and everything lines up the way that God had, has ordained for it to line up. When are you going to pop the question? She wondering, the church wondering, the pastor wondering. They see you all, uh, all hugged up and booed up. Uh, you ready to move in? Because surely you're not living together and you ain't married. Surely we're not doing this in 2021. But you've got everything in order. You know that God brought you together. When are you going to make a decision to commit yourself and make a decision, a choice to do something about your situation? What, what I love about this generation is uh, we're, we're opening up and understanding the value of who we are. And, and you've got entrepreneurs that are popping up absolutely everywhere. If you can sell it, they selling it. Somebody start making colored napkins. Somebody got a business called the colored napkin business. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got businesses in your home. They got folks in their home and their car. Hey Amen. They, they are a walking advertising scene because they have made, they've found out what their worth is and their value is. And they've got something that is desired and that is wanted and that there is a need for. And they are making choices and decisions to incorporate themselves. But when it comes to our living, hey Amen, we're choosing to do nothing about sad situations in our life when we know God is calling us, pushing us, speaking to us to make a choice and a decision to move and we're standing still. Still say I'm waiting on the Lord where well, the Lord already gave you the answer. When are you going to do something? Fourth thing is this. Watch this. Watch what these lepers did. <laughs> yeah. They, they had it. They made a decision. Uh, they had to make a decision. They knew they had to make a decision, so they made a decision. They knew they couldn't sit there anymore because if they sit there, they were going to die. Uh huh. They done the research. They had. They, they knew what was going to happen. They knew what was before them. They knew what was behind them. Amen. They knew where they were right then. They were realistic, and they knew. But what they did next was uh, they actually did it. <laughs> they, they got up from their seated position. They got up from their comfortable position. They got up from the place that they knew 
and went and stepped out into the unknown. We've got men, too many, far too many saints of God that will procrastinate and then procrastinate and then procrastinate some more. You are the anointed of God. And that's what, what I like about God is what, well, you know, what old folks used to tell us is that if you make one step, he'll make two. And, 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 and I don't know where I got a hold to that at, but, but, but I just believe that in my spirit. And I don't even know what it means, really. If I make one step, how God making two with his big old feet? And he big and he a big God. How he making two steps to my one step? But all I know is, is that if I move, then God's going to move with me and for me. I just came to that realization and, and too many times in our life God has confirmed this for us. He's been there for us. He's sorted things out. He's made ways out of no ways. He's corrected our mistakes. But he did this because we made a move and believed God. Believed God. I mean, I, even coming uh, here to this location, hey man, I was hesitant about how, 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 how we were gonna make the transition. I, you know, I'm married and I've got two children, and and, and I've got to leave my family and come here from Ozark, Alabama, hey amen, uh, to, to to Hinesville, Georgia, and I'm trying to figure out how everything is going to fall in place and how things are going to line up the way they need to line up, hey amen. Because uh, folks that knew me back then know I had it good. I had a good setup in a good church, a good ministry. Amen. I preached when I needed to preach. Amen. I was responsible for, for various things within the ministry, and I was very, very comfortable. Amen. Very successful at my job. The home was good. Everything was nice, but God had to shake me out of my comfortable place. And then I had to believe and trust him. Such as the lepers, I had a choice. I could have stayed where I was and not progressed anymore in my career, not progressed anymore spiritually. Amen. I could have stayed right where I was and been very comfortable, continued to live a good life and live the high life. Amen. I was good. I had friends. I had loved ones. I had family. I had support. I had babysitters. Anybody know what it is to be like in a place that you got babysitters you ain't got to pay for? Talk to me, single mothers. Talk to me, single mothers. It's good to be in a place you can just drop them babies off and say, I'll be back in a couple of hours. I appreciate you. Oh, y'all don't want to be. Y'all ain't with me this morning. Y'all ain't, ain't with me this morning. Y'all not with me this morning. But, but what we had to do, I had to actually move. I had to move. I had to move. We have to move. We have to ask. We make plans and we've got, we've done the research. We, 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 the, the lepers saw what was happening, but then they had to actually do something. They can't, we can't live off the procrastination. It accomplishes absolutely nothing. How many times are you going to tell me that I'm getting ready to go look for a job? Yeah. How, how many times are you going to tell me, I'm, I, I, oh, I'm filling out some applications. I, I'm going to pick up some more applications. How many applications are you going to pick up? Are, are you really picking them up? How, how many times are, are you going to say you getting ready to, you fixing to, you almost was getting ready to? Oh, we'll lay it out real good, real smooth. Yeah, yes, I, I'm, this is what my plans are. I, I plan to after this, I'm going to do that. And after that, I'm going to, I, I work it out. It's going to be maybe three to six weeks. I'm going to have to do this. And then I've got to multiply this. I'm going to have to cut back on my eating out for a little while. And then I'm going to step into this and I'll have this much money coming in. But you, none of that comes to manifestation if you don't do nothing. can't procrastinate all your life because you'll go from 18 to 48 in a matter of seconds and you'll still be telling the same story I'm uh, your next next thing you know is your 10 year reunion and you still talking about uh, are you the manager at crystals are you uh, what are you doing at Crystals? You were, you were at Crystals in high school. You, you were working the front register in high school. Now, now are you still there? Or are, you, are you the manager now? Are you the regional manager? You know, what are you doing now? 
because we've stayed there and we procrastinate about, I'm finna go to college. We stayed there and we procrastinated about uh, somebody told me about a job and I was going to go apply. But I, we, we stayed there and we said, well, my baby, I got to wait till she get out of, out, out of, you know, get to daycare age. And then I'll put her in daycare and then I'm going to make my next move. I, 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 we waited for everybody else and hadn't done what we said we were going to do. Tell your neighbor, I got to do it. <laughs> didn't procrastinate but they had to do something in the natural saints of God uh, we got to go to work we got to work due to the effects of the pandemic I will tell you that we are in a place where we almost anybody can find a job <clears throat> uh, it, it's hard to find a house but almost anybody can find a job it, it's help wanted signs everywhere uh, sh shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem, shouldn't be a problem. If you desire to work, if you want to work, it's not really hard right now to find a job. It may not be, it, it, it may not be the job that you want to have. It may not be the job that you want, but it could be a stepping stone to propel you into your career. You will have a little change coming in your pocket. Amen. Amen. I, I, and I don't, I don't know about you. I was just one of them folks that that, you know, I, I, I wasn't a dope man, so I just wanted to have a little money in my pocket. I, I, I need to have a little something, I, you know, just, just in case, because I knew my mama wasn't going to give it to me, and daddy wasn't going to give it to me. They didn't have it for themselves, and it was six of us, so I had to, if I was going to make it, I was going to have to make it myself. If I don't get no other witnesses, Deacon David Hayes knows. <laughs> if you was going to get it. You was going to grind it out and get it on your own. Uh, 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 but those small, even, even those, you, you, what we think is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm too good for this. I'm, I'm better than this. Yes, you are. But use that as a stepping stone to propel you into where you know you're destined to be. So the Bible tells us over in Thessalonians, amen, that for even when we were with you, we would give this command, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Oh, that's hard, isn't it? That's, that's just, that's just hardcore rough right there. Just, if he's not willing to work, then let him stop. He's capable, he's able, she's capable, she's able. Uh, they have the means, they, they, they can get to a place where they, 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 they can receive for themselves, but they are not willing to work, then let him not eat. No, that's my baby, he gonna stay here as long as he want it. As long as I'm living, he got a house and a roof over his head, and he always gonna have a hot meal. Well, that joker ain't working, get him to working. Yeah, he, 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 okay, my baby, he trying, he trying. Okay, while he trying, let him cut the grass. Let him get up on the roof and pull the sticks off, get the leaves out the gutters. Let, put that joker to work. Oh, they're going to kick me out. The deacon board going to vote me out today. <laughs> For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Somebody shout, I gotta do something. Yeah, 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 this, this. That's why I wanted the organ this morning, because it just sound good to me. It just sound good to me. I just needed a little help for myself. So that, that, just have, Pastor Hayes, you on the right track. I give my sons a hard time, amen, about making sure that they're working, that they're trying, that they're applying themselves, that they're too, they're too blessed, they're too healthy. Amen. I, I'm not trying to feed a grown man at my house doing absolutely nothing. I ain't trying to feed a halfway grown man. I, I, ain't try, I ain't trying to, you know, one, once they start walking real good, he picking up his toys or something. He picking up something. Right? He going he to help me out. He, we, if I'm pulling the grass, then he pulling grass too. If, if I'm cutting the yard, then he raking. Something happening up in here. Well. 
Yeah, yeah. I may, I may get in a little trouble with the wife. Get that baby out there, son. But no, he going to work just a little bit. You can call him in for some tea later. In the spiritual saints of God, we are in a time where we have to understand that we, we can't afford the luxury of doing nothing. It's our choice. We choose whether to serve. We choose whether to come to church. We choose whether to do or not to do. We choose. Uh, uh, who's not? Uh, well, I was sick. Well, who's not sick? Yeah, well, well, I'm hurting. Well, you, uh, uh, who's not hurting? Oh, it's got quiet. It's, we're, we're, we all are going through. We all have some issues. Your, your issue, you may have a little more pain. Your pain may be on a 10 and mine is on a 5. Amen. But what can you give God with your 10? And what can I give God with my 5? But we ought to be doing something. Amen. It's, it's the same with our giving, that sacrifice. You may have a lot more in the bank than I have, but what I have, am I giving my best? Are you giving your best? It's too many times that we 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 we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll we'll just duck out because we say, "Well, I'm sick." Knowing what trips me out is knowing that, that that if we if it was about the job and making money, we there. We are we all the way there. I'm coughing, but listen, y'all stay on that side of the room. I'm gonna stay on this side of the room. Call. I'm a little bit sick today, but I'm here. I'm clocking in. Don't short me on my time. And we're there and we'll give, we'll give, uh, 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 we'll give our job the very best of what we've got. The very best of what we got and give God what's left over. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. This, this, is, this is good stuff this morning. This is good stuff. This good stuff. Just, just feel like, just say, he talking to them folks online. He ain't talking to us in here. He ain't talking to us. He ain't talking to us. Hey, they, he talking to them folks online. They messed up. They messed up. I'm sorry, people online. That's what they, y'all tell. That's what y'all think about them is in, in the house today. <laughs> but watch this. In the spirit of saints of God, for those of us that are saved, we are consistently on the job working for the Lord. Consistently, we are at work. Colossians 3 and 23 says that whatsoever, whatever we do, work heartily as to the Lord for not and not to not for men, not for men. Whatever we do, we work heartily as unto the Lord, not as unto men. And that includes our service in the kingdom. In this time that we're in, saints, there, there are five things I want to leave with you. Amen. Ooh, I'm going a little long this morning. Pray for a brother. Pray for me. Pray for me. Is it good? If it's good, I can keep going. If it's good, I can. <laughs> my gauge is Lady Hayes. It's broke this morning. It's broke. I ain't going to look over there. I ain't going to look. I ain't going to look. All right, let me hit you these five. This, listen, saints of God, we're in the time that we're in. Amen. We know that we're in the season of pandemic. We're in the season where, where, where people are in-house. We've got to stay in. Amen. But that does not conclude. That does not uh, uh, keep us from doing the work that we know needs to be done. And number one, I need you to do these five things. Number one, I need you to be there. Be there, be there, show up for people, even if it's not in person. There's too many people that are hurting. There's too many people that need to know the Lord. There are too many people that are in need of, of, of some encouragement. They are in need of what you've got on the inside of you. So I need you to be there, number one, to be there. Show up for people, even if it's not in person. Shoot a text. Give them a call. Amen. Hit them up on Facebook. Inbox them. Do something. But be there for people that you know are in need of the God that you serve. Amen. Now, it's not it's hard to reach out and touch someone with the hand. So 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 we have options. Amen. But we've got to try to be there through social platforms, through whatever we can use to be there to offer care and to offer support. Number two, listen, we've got to listen in love. 
we don't have time to judge. We, no matter what the, the, the what uh, turn this crisis takes or whatever we have going on during this pandemic time, this time where you know we're looking for people and wondering uh, what how they're doing in the church, outside of the church. They're not here. We see them. We don't see them. Amen. We don't have time. We have to when we do have the connection. We have to listen in love. By listening, we embody the love of the sake the sacredness of community, the love of life itself. That compassionate listening is what people need more than hearing you talk about the mess and the drama that's affecting your life. Amen? Amen. Number three, we need to pray. We need to pray. Amen. It's more than just saying, I'm praying for you. We need to open our mouths and pray for people. Spoken prayers for who those who are dealing with these in challenging times. It, it, it does it, it feels a great need and helps to reshape the meaning of the situation that they're in. Amen. Everybody needs a little bit of prayer. Yeah, yeah, and if they're going to receive it, it needs to come from us. Amen. They, they, they get they get a little perturbed with me when I don't make it to the council meetings because they want me to pray. They, they, they want the pastor to pray. They don't want the other commissioners or the, 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 the council members to pray. I know somebody might be watching this morning, but I'm just going to say what they be saying. They, 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 want, they want the pastor to pray. They want the preacher to pray. So we've got to be there. We've got to listen and love. We have to pray for one another. Amen. Without being judgmental, without being preachy. And we need to be there just to support in prayer using godly wisdom. Amen. Earnestly praying for people. Amen. Number four. Watch this. When we can so important, so, so vital. Amen. We must point people to Jesus. We that know him, we must point them to Jesus. It's not how wise we are. It's not how smart we are. It's not how anointed we are. It's not how gifted we are. What is on the inside of us should be the love of Jesus. And that's what the people need. Point them to him and not to you. This is the way that we've got to lead now. People are always have always needed Jesus, but there seems to be now a greater awareness in the season that we're in. And when more people are doing church online and people are recognizing a need for someone to rescue them. Amen. And many are actively seeking Jesus Christ. And we've got to continue to point them, point them to him. Number five, we're getting ready to go home. Watch this. Remember, you work. You got to do something. You got to do something. And, and for those of us that are doing and we're constantly doing and we're actively doing and we're, we're looking, we're, we're, we're taking care of things spiritually. We're taking care of things naturally. Amen. We're taking care of other folks' children. And we're, we're taking care of, of our house and assisting with somebody else's house and taking care of loved ones and parents and, amen, and taking care of the people at work and, and little kids that we feel sorry for on the job and all these different things. We're taking care of everything else and we're working, we're working, and we're constantly working. Remember this this last one, number five, remember you. Remember you. Doesn't mean abandon the work, but do remember you. We're human. We're human. We're human and we're limited in our nature and we, we, we must tend to our own needs. We, we have to lean to our own community for support and we have to take turns with leading the charge. I know you like to be the man, but sometimes you got to shift it and let somebody else take the lead to take the load off of you. It's tempting to believe that we've got to do everything right now. Not so. Not so there's some things that you've got to prioritize so that you can take care of you. Amen. Uh, 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 this might be a bad example, but, but it's a good example. And my, my daughter Leah, you know, she, she works really hard. She works really hard. So I give her no hard time when she goes ghost and, and, and goes and does her little thing, which is happening real soon. Amen. And, 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 listen. She be out. She's out. 
She'll make sure that the, the loose ends are tied up. She makes sure the praise team is good. She makes sure the job is good. She makes sure she'll send us an itinerary of what she's going to do the whole time she's gone. But she's like deuces. She's taking care of herself. Amen. Uh, uh, and we have other sister, sister uh, Jennings. I don't know when she's in town. She's out of town. I, 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 I know she works hard. <laughs> and I know she's gone. I know she's gone. <laughs> Some of y'all, I see you too much. I need you to take a break and take care of you. Take care of you. Take care of you. It's important. It's important. It's okay. It's all right. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is not selfish. Sabbath is not a luxury. You've got to take care of you. And I give these examples, amen, amen, but when, when, when these folks that, that are working and they, they, when, you take, when you take care of yourself, you, you need that me time, amen, you don't drop the load and they don't drop the load, amen, they, co they coordinate and communicate and make sure the loose ends are tied up and then they go so that they can be released and there's nothing on their shoulders, amen, and, and, and it's, it's, it's y'all might see me too much, y'all might see might see me too much. But you'll, if you ask my leaders, they'll know, they will tell you that, you know, he may try to make sure that everything was done and in place and taken care of. Before I, before I left, I tried to make sure that anything, any loose ends that need to be tied up are tied up. Amen? Amen, because we still are a part of the kingdom and things have to be done decently and in order. But I've got to do something got to do something. Philippians again says, do all things without grumbling, questioning that you might be blameless, innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Why? Because among whom you shine as lights in the world. We are the light of the world and the world need to see our worth. There goes the music. The world needs to see our worth. Your work in the kingdom is important. Your work in the world is important. We are sent out as disciples and we're sent out as examples of kingdom. We're examples of Christ walking in the earth, including on our jobs. We teach, we show, and we, we do, thing as, do things as unto the Lord. The saints shouldn't be the one that's stealing the toilet, pe toilet tissue from work. Stealing all the pens and the pencils from work. Stealing all the supplies. That can't be the saints because we work as unto the Lord and it doesn't matter where we are. Our work does not go unnoticed because it's unto God. And he's a rewarder to those that are diligently seeking him. And even as we walk in on the job and walk out of the job, we should go in with the Lord and walk right back out with him. Amen. We can't lay it down, saints. We can't lay it down and say, you know, uh-uh. I'm finna get, I'm finna, they finna, they finna hear me today. No, they need to hear Jesus. They need to see the God in you. You can't be a part of the gossip crew. You can't, you can't be a part of the clique that's talking and putting down everybody else like you're better than everybody else. You have to be different. You are a light. Tell your neighbor, shine. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for being a light in our lives and a light that radiates in us, Lord God, radiates out of us. We've got to do the work. Lord God, give us the strength. Give us the wisdom. Give us understanding. Give us the power and authority to step out by faith and do something. Do something that the Bible tells us that whatever we put our hands to do, that whatsoever we find our hands to do, God, we need you to bless just that. We need you to continue to be with us, walk with us, lead us, and guide us. And we give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.